All right, here are 10 fish that you can keep with neon tetras. We're gonna be talking about three algae eating, three schooling, and four centipede fish that mix well with neons. Just make sure you have at least a group of six of them, and ideally a minimum tank size of 10 gallons. But with that all aside, let's get into the list. All right, so the first group of fish we're gonna be talking about are algae eaters. So the first algae eater we have on the list are the bristlenose catfish. I reckon these are perfect for neon tetras. I've kept them both harmoniously in an aquarium before. They work absolutely fine. And with the bristlenose catfish, there are so many different varieties you can choose from. You've got peppermint, super red, just your commons, your long fins. Now these fish will live at a completely different area of the tank than your neon tetras. Your bristlenose will always be right on the bottom. Bristlenose catfish are great at eating your green dust algae and some of your green spot algae. And just make sure whenever there's no algae in your aquarium, you make sure that you actually feed your bristlenose catfish. Algae wafers are a way to go, but you can also mix it up with veggies. They have to make number one on the list. All right, so we've got a bit of an oddball algae eater next, and that is the hill stream loach. Now, hill stream loaches are basically a little stingray looking fish, and they literally go around in all the nooks and crannies and eat all that algae that you can't get to. And so they're really great at doing that. The only thing you're gonna need with the hill stream loaches is flow. Your neon textures can do really well as long as there's some calm areas in your tank. So this is for your larger aquariums and make sure your hillstream loaches are in groups. So if you've got a 20 gallon or above, get a group of hillstream loaches, add a powerful filter, make sure there's flow in some areas of the tank. I haven't kept these myself, but they are apparently a great beginner fish. You've got nothing to lose and they do look pretty darn cool. All right, please don't sue me, but next up we've got not a fish, but a shrimp, and that is the Amano shrimp. Of course, they have to make the top three algae heaters for neon tetras, because Amano shrimp are too big for neon tetras to eat, and Amano shrimp are probably one of the best algae eaters out there. They are a see-through looking shrimp, but they get a lot bigger than any of your other species out there, so they get about the five to eight centimeter mark. I've heard some, yeah, get to eight centimeters. They're really cool to watch, and they're a great crew to have in any aquarium. All right, now let's talk about three schooling fish to school with your neon tetras. Now, first up, we've got the Praycox rainbow fish, also known as the dwarf neon rainbow fish. So yeah, they get a lot smaller than most other rainbow fish out there, like your Bosmanis. The dwarf neons will only really get that five to six centimeter mark. They like to be in a nice big group at around, say, five or six, at least. They're both neon fish, so they work pretty well together. I reckon if you're gonna have a group of dwarf neons and neon tetras, minimum tank size of probably like 30 gallons. Right now, number five on the list, we have cherry barbs. So I actually have them with my neon tetras in this aquarium behind me right now. But cherry barbs will give you a bit of a red coloration in your tank. Neon tetras have a hint of red, so that also works pretty well color-wise. But yeah, if your aquarium is 20 gallons or larger, a group of six or more cherry barbs will work really well. They'll stand out, of course, with your neon tetras. And yeah, they group together, but they also will sometimes scatter across the tank too. They should be absolutely peaceful and ignore all the other fish in your aquarium. Yeah, they make great tank mates with neon tetras. No issues so far. I don't think there ever will be. So if you've got like a 10 gallon aquarium and you do want a smaller schooling fish to go in there, then I highly recommend you try Pygmy Corydoras. Another unique little fish. If you like Corydoras catfish, you've heard of them. They're so adorable, but usually you need like a 20 gallon or larger. Pygmy Corydoras only get about two or three centimeters max, but if you've got a group of six of them, they can easily thrive in a 10 gallon with a group of neon tetras as well. But you'll actually find that Pygmy Corydoras hang out almost always at the middle of the tank. Mine also do tend to hang out near the bottom, but yeah, you'll see them a lot at the middle and top of the aquarium. Pygmy Corydoras will stand out. They're really fun to keep, and they're a great beginner fish to go with your neon tetras. All right, now we're gonna be talking about four great centipedes fish. So the first fish on the list we have is the pearl slash honey gouramis. So I thought I'd put both of them on the list. If you've got a smaller aquarium with a school of neon tetras, then a honey gourami is ideal. But if you've got a larger aquarium, 20 gallons or above, you can get one or two pearl gouramis and they'll look stunning. The pearl gourami has this pearl and coloration on the body, all these different patternings, it's really cool, and a red belly, whereas the honey gouramis are gonna be a completely orange slash yellow fish. And yeah, they're both really easy to keep, they don't require much effort, and they're not very fussy with their foods. Great tank mates with neon tetras. I've kept both gouramis with neon tetras before with absolutely no problems. All right, now at number eight, we have the golden one 
the killifish. These are another interesting little fish that you don't usually find on the lists. They are a killifish and they've got that typical trait of a killifish where they have that body and those big eyes and that like round mouth almost always at the top of the tank. The males will have a nice golden coloration whereas the females will be a bit more of a beige color more drained out sort of yellow. Golden wonders are another great beginner fish and do really well with neon tetras. Now at number nine we've got dwarf cichlids so there's a lot of different dwarf cichlids out there. You've got rams, butterflies, epistogrammers and yeah just a lot to pick from but dwarf cichlids are ideal for 15 gallons and above. But yeah, they do really well with neon tetras. Neon tetras act as the dither fish for these uh, dwarf cichlids. And it'll basically encourage the dwarf cichlids to come out more often because the neon tetras swimming around will act as like a sign that there's no predators for the pistogrammers. And yeah, great cichlid, especially if you've got a planted aquarium with a school of neon tetras. All right, and now last on the list, we've got a really funky little fish I haven't kept personally but it's the upside down catfish. So I wanted to make it a little interesting. Now, the upside down catfish, just like its name, literally swims like a catfish that's basically upside down. They don't grow very big, so I reckon they'd be fine with neon tetras, as long as you keep those catfish well fed. But honestly, I don't see how there could be any problems keeping them with neon tetras. So they wouldn't really eat other fish unless it's already dead. So yeah, I recommend if you want to go for something different, I'm definitely going to be keeping these guys sometime soon. Yeah, if that catches your eye, then give them a go with your neon tetras. Now, if some of the fish that were on this list interested you, then check out this playlist on the screen because this is all the care guys I've done before and a bunch of them are some of the fish that I've talked about today. So check that out if you like. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Have an awesome day and I'll see you all in the next video.